In this video, I'm going to explore a curious phenomenon in the way that our brains process words and colours, and may give us some insight into the way our brains make decisions. Let's find out more, shall we? To start off, I'm going to show you some coloured blocks. I want you to say the colours of the blocks starting at the top and ending at the bottom. You can say them either in your head or out loud, maybe not if you're on the bus, but I want you to say each colour. Ready? Here we go. Now even if you were saying the colours out loud, that shouldn't have taken you very long. Almost as quick as it took for your eyes to move down the different coloured blocks. Let's try the experiment again, only this time I'm going to show you some words, and I want you to say the colour of the text, not what the word says. Ready? Let's go. That probably took you longer, even though there are the same number of colours to name. But why was a second test more difficult? This effect is actually called the Stroop effect, and was first described in English by John Ridley Stroop in 1935. The effect had been described in German previously. In Stroop's original test, he conducted two experiments with a number of volunteers. In the first experiment, he showed them two lists of words. In one set of words the text was black, and the other set were of different colours. The volunteers just had to read the words. Stroop found that in this experiment that there was no difference between the amount of time it took to read each list, and so concluded that the different colours of the second list was not distracting the test subjects. In his second experiment, Stroop then showed the subjects two more sets of objects. For each, the volunteer had to state the colour of each object. The first set of objects were just coloured blocks, very much like the experiment I started this video with. The second set of objects were a list of colours, but the colour of the text was different to the name of the colour printed. In this experiment, he found that the people took longer to say the colour of the object when the word was different. And this is the Stroop effect. But why should this confuse our brains in the way that it does? Well, we don't know the full story to the Stroop effect, but there are a number of ideas about why it works. The first possibility is an effect on processing speed. This hypothesis suggests that the information about the word and the colour are processed separately and go through a decision-making centre in the brain. Word processing is faster than colour processing so the word information gets to that decision centre first. The colour information now has to wait to be processed, and this then means that there's a lag time until we can name the colour. If we are asked just to read the word, because that information gets to the decision centre first, then there's no lag time, and we can read the word without delay. Another hypothesis suggests that we read automatically, because we have a lot of practice at reading. But more than this, because of that practice we have at reading, we automatically understand the meaning of words. Stating the colour of something isn't something that we get a lot of practice at, and so our brains have to override our initial impulse to read the word in order to name its colour, and this takes a little more time. A different hypothesis suggests that as we practice certain tasks, the neural pathways in the brain become stronger. We spend a lot of time reading, and so the pathways controlling this are very strong. Naming colours we do less frequently, and so the pathways for this are less well developed and so less strong. When asked to name the colour, the stronger reading pathway interferes with our ability to name it. And yet another alternative hypothesis says that our brains automatically deal with information in ways that we have little control over. Reading is a largely unconscious process due to our familiarity with it. Colour recognition requires our attention, but enough of our attention is used reading that it disturbs our brains enough to slow down the colour recognition task. Whatever it is, the real answer probably has a number of different factors that affect it. Tests have been carried out where the volunteers had to say the colour of the text where the words were unrelated to the colours, 
and in this test there was no delay in naming the colours. As we can see here, each of the words is not a colour, and naming of the colour of the text should not show a delay. So this effect isn't just to do with reading, but the fact that we are reading the names of colours. It must in some way have to do with not just the processing of words, but the fact that the meaning of the words is conflicting with the colour of the text. The Stroop effect doesn't mean that we can't perform the task, just that there is a delay that wouldn't be there if the conflicting information wasn't present. Before we look at different variants of the Stroop effect, I make frequent trips into outer space, inner space or through time. If you want to join me on my journeys then don't forget to subscribe. My space and time machine is bigger on the inside so there's plenty of room for everyone. There are a number of variants of the Stroop effect which all show a similar lag in response. For instance, in this example, stating the number of numbers is slowed down by the conflicting information of what the actual numbers are saying. Similarly, in this example, we can see on screen being able to state which direction the arrow is pointing is made more difficult by the addition of a conflicting word. And again, we can see that the information here has to conflict in a way with what's been shown on the screen. There's even a negative Stroop effect. This test shows a black background with the name of a colour written in a colour that's different to the colour name. At the four corners are different coloured blocks. The person has to point to the outer square that is the same as the name of the written colour. Again, there's a delay in performing this task. Oddly, you might expect that when we're young and words have less of an automatic meaning, that the Stroop effect will be less pronounced, and that as we get older, and the urge to read words automatically increases, then the Stroop effect will be greater. However, the opposite is true. As we get older, the Stroop effect diminishes. It's thought that this is due to our ability to regulate our behaviour, which increases as we get older, and so we're able to control our cognitive faculties and better assign mental resources to particular tasks. The Stroop task is now used in cognitive tests in a variety of clinical settings. The Stroop interference is increased in a number of disorders such as dementia, certain forms of brain damage and schizophrenia. I think it's an interesting phenomenon and gives us another insight into the way our brains function. But for now, and until our next journey, thank you for watching.